everyone and welcome to this complete guide to preservation of ochre. There are timestamps in the description, so feel free to skip to the sections you are interested in. Keep in mind all the information from this video is based off what we know from the beta. I will be going over preservation of ochre's abilities, talents, talent builds, rotation, stats, and add-ons so far. And I will have a link to the talent builds and add-ons in the description as well. Now let's get into it. Evokers have a unique resource called Essence, which is used to power specific abilities. And Evokers only have five Essence. When Essence is consumed, it regenerates over time. Now let's take a look at the abilities, starting with the racials. And I'm only going over the racials that are relevant to doing dungeons and raids. Visage is an ability that allows Drakthir to turn into a visage form, and while in this form, it increases their party's out-of-combat health regeneration. This can be useful in dungeons to help passively heal players up as you move from pack to pack. Chosen Identity allows the Drakthir to choose if it always wants to go into visage form while out of combat. Tail Swipe knocks nearby enemies up, and it has a lot of uses in dungeons because you can use it to interrupt mobs. Wing Buffet knocks nearby mobs back and can also be used to interrupt mobs. Glide allows the Drakthir to spread their wings when they press spacebar to reduce their falling speed, much like Demon Hunters can. And they have a passive called Awakened, which increases their mastery by 1.8%. Next, I'm going to go over the buffs that Preservation of Ogre has access to. The biggest one is Fury of the Aspects, which is Bloodlust. So they're another lust class that you can bring along in dungeons and raids. Next, they have a one-hour buff called Blessing of the Bronze. This reduces the cooldown of a major movement ability for all party and raid members by 15% for one hour. You can see which ability it is reducing the cooldown of if you hover over the buff, because it will list it in the description. Now the next buff is a talent, and it's called Source of Magic, which is on the class tree. It allows the evoker to redirect excess magic for 30 minutes to another healer. When you cast an empowered spell, you restore 0.25% of their max mana per empower level. This can only be active on one healer at a time. Next I want to go over the base passives that the class has access to. Tempered Scales is a passive that increases armor by 75%. Mastery Life Binder says healing done to allies is increased by a certain percentage, which is based on your mastery, while their health percentage is lower than your own. On the beta, I had a mastery of 51%, and the value it said was increased by 50%. And this last passive is a talent. Now there's a ton of passes in the talent tree, but I wanted to bring up this specific one because I think it is going to be a go-to talent, and that is Scarlet Adaptation. This stores 20% of your effective healing up to spell power times 1.61. Your next damaging living flame consumes all stored healing to increase its damage dealt. If you hover over this talent in game, it will tell you how much is stored exactly because it will do the calculations for you. And it is going to be useful because it will boost the DPS power of your living flame. Now we have the damaging spells, which first off is Living Flame, which is a hybrid spell because this can deal damage or heal allies. Next is Azura Strike. This is an instant cast spell that deals spell frost damage to two enemies. Then we have Disintegrate, which costs three essence. This is a channeled cast that blasts the target with spell frost damage and slows their movement speed by 30%. Then we have Fire Breath, which is an empowered spell that deals fire damage instantly and applies a dot dealing additional fire damage. The higher the empowerment level, the higher the initial damage done, and the shorter the dot is. And next we have Deep Breath, which allows you to choose a targeted location to fly over, and then you'll spew molten cinders on the ground, dealing volcanic damage to any enemies in your path. Using this ability removes any root effects, and you are immune to movement impairing and loss of control effects while flying. Next up, Utility. Quell, which is a class talent, is an interrupt that is on a 40 second cooldown. So quite a long cooldown, but being able to interrupt as a healer is amazing because there's a lot of DPS that never use their interrupt. Next is Landslide. This is also a class talent. You conjure a path of stone that roots all enemies in its path for 30 seconds. However, damage breaks this effect. Recall is a class talent that allows you to teleport back to your initial location when you use Deep Breath or Dream Flight. Then we have Hover, which is your movement spell that you will be using a lot of, at least I use it a lot. You launch yourself forward and increase your movement speed by 30% for 6 seconds and allow spells to be cast while 
while moving. However, it does not work on empowered spells. Hover will launch you in the direction you are moving, so you can make some good plays where you just tap S for a second to dash backwards, or any other movement key to go in the direction you want. And if you have no movement keys pressed when you trigger Hover, then you'll just jump into the air. So that's a neat trick to know because then if you're too scared of dashing into a mechanic, you can just use Hover while standing still. Rescue is another class talent. You can swoop to an ally and fly them to a target location. Sleepwalk is a class talent. It disorients an enemy for 20 seconds, causing them to sleepwalk to you. Damage has a chance to break this effect. Oppressing Roar is another class talent. You let out a roar in a frontal comb that increases the duration of crowd control effects on those mobs by 50% for the next 10 seconds. And Unravel says, Sunder an enemy's protective magic, dealing heavy spell frost damage to absorb shields. The damage done does scale based on your stats. Time Spiral allows you and your allies to cast their major movement ability once in the next 10 seconds, even if it's on cooldown, and it makes that movement ability glow. Now finally, we are getting to the healing spells here. So their single res is called Return, and then the mass res is called Mass Return. Very creative. Naturalize is the preservation dispel, which gets rid of magic and poison effects. Then there is, of course, Living Flame, which is a heal and a damaging ability, as I said before. Emerald Blossom is a healing ability that costs 3 essence. It places a flower at your target's location, and the flower will then explode, healing up to 3 players within the area of effect. And then we have Averted Embrace, which is a class talent. It makes you fly to an ally and heal them. Cauterizing Flame is a talent. It removes all bleed, poison, curse, and disease effects, and then heals for a certain amount upon removing an effect. The amount it heals depends on your stats. It will tell you when you mouse over it in the talents how much it heals for. Echo is a talent on the spec tree, and what it does a bit of a heal when you first cast it on someone, but also it replicates your next non-echo healing spell to cast an additional time on that ally at 70% of normal healing. Echo is an ability that costs 2 essence. Next is Reversion, which is also a guaranteed talent. This is a 12 second haunt you can put on players, and it does have a catch when Reversion critically heals, its duration is extended by 1.7 seconds. Dream Breath is another guaranteed spec talent. It's an empowered spell that heals players and puts a hot on them. It is basically the healing version of Fire Breath. The higher the empower level, the bigger the initial heal, but the shorter the hot. Next, we have another guaranteed spec talent, which is Spirit Bloom. This is another empowered spell that heals an additional ally per empowered level. So if you only want to use it for one person, you do empowered level one. If you need to heal multiple people, you would do, you know, two, three, depending on the situation. Next, we have Temporal Anomaly, which is a talent on the spec tree, and you can skip this if you don't like it. It is basically a sand orb that will pulsate an absorb shield onto players within it every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. It can only shield 2 players at a time each time it pulses. So you can get shields on up to 6 players if it hits a different player for each pulse. Now quickly let's look at the defenses. We have Obsidian Scales, which is a class talent. It reduces damage taken by 30%. Then there is Renewing Blaze, another class talent, which says 100% of the damage you take is healed back over 8 seconds. And their last defensive is Emerald Communion, which is a spec talent. Restores 20% health and 2% mana every second for 5 seconds. Overhealing is transferred to a nearby injured ally. It is usable while stunned, feared, or silenced. And saving the best for last, we have the major cooldowns. Tip the Scales is a class talent, and it says compress time to make your next empowered spell cast instantly and at its maximum empower level. Then we have Time Dilation, which is a spec talent. You stretch time around an ally for the next 8 seconds, causes 50% of the damage they take to instead be dealt over 8 seconds. Think of this as a temporary monk stagger. When you use it on a player, it puts an icon on them that looks exactly like Monk Stagger, and it will turn green, yellow, or red based on how much damage the player took. Rewind is a spec talent, and it is the best healing cooldown you have access to. It heals back 50% of the damage allies took in the last 5 seconds for everyone within 40 yards. 
It always heals for at least some amount depending on what your stats are. If you scroll over the talent in game, it will tell you what that amount is. Healing is increased by 100% when not in a raid. Then we have Zephyr, which is a plus talent. You conjure a updraft to lift you and your four nearest allies within 20 yards into the air, reduces damage taken from AoE effects by 20%, and increases movement speed by 30% for 8 seconds. Then we have Dream Flight, which is a spec talent. It works like Deep Breath, but heals instead. All players in your path are not only healed, but also have a 15 second haunt applied. And Stasis, which is a spec talent, stores your next three healthful spells to be duplicated and stored in Eternal Walk. You may activate Stasis at any time within the next 30 seconds to unleash all the spells. Keep in mind these spells will cast on the original targets you put the spells on. Now that you know the abilities you have access to, we can take a look at the talent tree. And guys, if you find this guide helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more Preservation of Ochre content, as I will be continue to be making Preservation of Ochre content into Dragonflight, showing you all the cool stuff you can do with this class. So let's talk about talents, starting with the class tree over here. Baseline, you have Expunge, which is your basic dispel. Then we have Obsidian Scales, great defensive, I like it, I take it. Landslide, this is a situational ability because you are rooting your enemies, so if there's any fights that you would need a root for, you can take it, but it's probably better in PvP than it is in PvE. Then down below you have Natural Convergence, which makes Disintegrate Channel faster. You would only really need to take this if you plan on taking Energy Loop, which makes Disintegrate deal more damage and you get some mana. Permeating Chill increases that passive you have from doing 30% movement speed reduction to 50%. Uh, this can be good in Mythic Keys, you know you can help your tank out if they need to kite, and it also helps slow mobs that like to run away for whatever reason. But the main reason I take Permeating Chill is so I can get Obsidian Bulwark because having two charges of Obsidian Scales is really nice. Then we have Verdant Embrace. This is a must-have because it is a super strong single target heal. Then you go for Scarlet Adaptation because it stores some of your healing to make your next Living Flame deal more damage. Enkindled makes your Living Flame deal 3 and 6% more damage. Uh, you take that always. Innate Magic makes your Essence regenerate 5 or 10% faster. I take it because I like it, but it may not be necessary depending on what you're doing. This is just Landslide's cooldown is reduced and it also can withstand more damage before breaking. Again, probably very situational. Next we have Quell, 100% take this for dungeons. Having an interrupt as a healer is so awesome because you know those DPS, those poor DPS, they just tunnel vision and they can't get those interrupts, so you gotta help them out. Recall, this is situational if you feel like you need to teleport back to your original deep breath or dream flight positions, you can take it. It's probably better in raids than it is in dungeons because you can just use hover to get where you need to go. You don't really need to waste a talent point here. Now here, this reduces Wing Buffet's cooldown by 45 seconds, or it reduces Tail Swipe's cooldown by 45 seconds. And I know it's Wing Buffet, but Buffet is funner to say, okay? Now in this choice node, I would 100% always recommend Tail Swipe. Tail Swipe only, never Wing Buffet, because Wing Buffet knocks things back. And that is really bad in keys because not only are you pushing enemies out of AoE damage or AoE effects, you don't want to push mobs out of DPS's stuff. They'll get mad, okay? Tail swipe way better because it knocks enemies up, not back. And I think this is a strong talent. You know, it is a viable talent for dungeons for sure. Take this talent if you want it because it is really nice having that cooldown reduction. Tailwind hover increases your movement speed by 70% for the first four seconds. Uh, Cauterizing flame, you always want this because it lets you dispel anything you can imagine. Evokers are the only healer that can dispel it all, at least that I know of. Down here is Sleepwalk. This is a CC. In preparation for this video, I tested out Sleepwalk and it actually might be amazing because what I found out is that when you use Sleepwalk on a mob, it walks to the current location you are at when you use Sleepwalk. It does not continuously follow you. And if you get close to the mob while it is Sleepwalking, it does not aggro. So this could be a very powerful CC to utilize in dungeons for skipping particular packs if there are any skips that happen to come about in this season of Mythic Plus. 
Attuned to the Dream increases your healing done and healing received by 2 and 4%. 100% recommend that. You should always take it. And Tip the Scales, this is something you always want to take as well. It just gives you an instant cast max empowered spell, which is great for emergency situations. Instinctive Arcana, your magic damage done is increased by 2 4%. I recommend taking this if you want to do DPS in dungeons, but if you don't want a DPS, you can spend it elsewhere. Roar of Exhilaration, successful interrupts, generate one essence. This, I don't think it's worth it because you have to think that's one essence every 40 seconds, and that's if you can interrupt something. Now down here, your stamina is increased by 2 or 4% if you take both. This is situational. If you feel like you're too squishy, you can take it. And you can synergize this talent with Life Force Mender, which says Living Flame and Fire Breath deal additional damage and healing equal to 1% of your max health. Next is Magic Damage Taken reduced by 2 or 4%. You can take that if you feel like the dungeon or raid content you're doing does a lot of magic damage and you feel like it would help a little bit. The reason you would take this talent is because you want access to source of magic more, not necessarily just for the magic damage reduction. Extended flight, hover lasts 2 or 4 seconds longer. I always take this because I love hover, but if you don't really find that you're using hover a lot, you can skip out on this one. Bountiful Bloom, you should only take this if you're going for an Emerald Blossom talent and for raids because Emerald Blossom baseline heals three people so this would make it heal five people. Ancient Flame healing yourself with Living Flame reduces cast time of your next Living Flame by 40%. This I don't think it's worth it because Living Flame baseline is a pretty weak heal so you're not really going to do this to you know optimize anything. You're better off just casting Living Flame on enemies. Panacea, Emerald Blossom instantly heals you for a certain amount when cast. This amount changes based on things like intellect and stuff, so it does scale with your stats. The reason I like this talent is because it makes Emerald Blossom kind of like a defensive, where if you're in a pinch, you can just throw out Emerald Blossom and get an instant heal on you. But the main reason for taking this is because it gives you access to these talents over here. Next, you have Walloping Blow, Wing Buffet, and Tail Swipe, knock enemies further and daze them, reducing movement speed by 70% for four seconds. It's a good choice, but I usually don't take it because I spend my points elsewhere. Then again, Source of Magic just gives a friendly healer. Mana, you would only use this in raids. It's probably great for progression, but once you're out of progression, I wouldn't take it. Exuberance, while above 75% health, your movement speed is increased by 10%. This is something you would take if you like to have a fast base movement speed, and it would be good for legacy content or just casual content. But in dungeons or raids, I'm not sure if it's worth the point. That is a to you if you like movement speed. Blast Furnace Fired Breast Damage over time lasts 2 seconds longer or 4 seconds longer. I take this because it is good to get that extra DPS in keys or in raids. Unravel, this is Sundering an Enemy's Absorb Shield, dealing 45,000 damage to the Absorb Shield. Again, that amount scales based on your stats. Now I tested this out and in high keys, 45k is not that much to an Absorb Shield. Now it can crit, I did have it crit for 100k, but in high keys, Absorb Shields are gonna be like 200k or more. Like they're huge. So unless they really buff that up, it's not gonna be doing a lot to Absorb Shields. Uh, protracted Talons, Azur Strike damages an additional enemy. I'll take this because it's good for three target cleave situations where maybe you don't want to cast Living Flame because it's gonna die soon, so you can just spam this. Oppressing Roar, this is an instant frontal cone that you shoot out. If you're using this, I suggest you stand back from the mobs a bit because the front of the cone is very thin, but it gets much wider as it spreads out, so it's easier to hit enemies if you're farther away from them. Pressing Roar is only going to be good if you synergize it with other stuns, but mainly if you get a Pressing Roar, I get it because of Overall, which removes one Enrage effect from each enemy. This is great because there are a lot of AoE Enrages in some of the dungeons, so I only take this in dungeons that have Enrages. Regenerative Magic, this is something that you would only use during progression because it causes 15% of the healing your bonded ally does to also heal you while you're below 50% health. Rescue, this is an amazing talent because not only does it let you move your friends around against their will, but it also is good for mobility. So say in a raid you need to get across the room, you can target an ally and just plop them next to where they're already standing just so you can get that movement to get across really fast. Um, it's a great fun ability, but also not 100% necessary if you'd rather spend talents somewhere else.
Lush Growth Green Spells restore 5 or 10% more health. I would only take this if you're focusing on a green healing build, so that's with Emerald Blossom, Dream Breath, and Spirit Bloom. Renewing Blaze, this is one of our defensives, and I have found it to be actually pretty weak because 8 seconds is a long time. Now you can get Foci of Life, which will make it so you take 20% increased healing while using Renewing Blaze, and that makes it a much better defensive because then you could do Renewing Blaze and then pop a Health Stone or Health Pot or just Verdant Embrace yourself and you would take a ton of healing. So it's probably better in Raids and it has uses in Dungeons, but only if you get Foci of Life. As for Fire Within, the 30 second cooldown reduction, not worth it. Renewing Blaze is not strong enough on its own, at least not right now. Then we have Twin Guardian. Rescue protects you and your ally from harm, absorbing damage equal to 30% of your max health for 5 seconds. This can be a good kind of defensive. It lets you use rescue defensively because you could just use it on someone to get a shield on both of you. Now, aerial mastery, hover gains one additional charge. I always take this because hover is amazing, as I said before. Ready went over this. Leaping flames. Fire breath causes your next living flame to strike one additional target per power level. I love this talent because it can make it so if you do a max empowered flame breath, you can either heal four to five allies, depending if you take the extra empowered talent, or you can damage four to five enemies. Now for Terror of the Skies, deep breath stuns enemy for three seconds. When you think about it, it's a three second stun on what, a two minute cooldown. This is more of a situational thing, like if you really need stuns, you can get it, but it's just such a long cooldown down for it, you can spend a point somewhere else. Time Spiral, I think this is better in raids than in dungeons, but it has its uses in both. If there's any raid fight that requires a lot of mobility, you could use this at a specific time to help everyone move during the fight, and the same goes for dungeons, but I usually do not take this. And now for Zephyr, this talent is way better in dungeons than it is in raids. It is an amazing dungeon talent because it reduces AoE damage that your entire party takes, so you can use it before a big mechanic goes out to really help yourself, help your team to not take a lot of damage. However, in raids, it only affects five people total, including you, so it's not as useful, but I guess it could still be a good kind of defensive for that small group you're in. Now let's take a look at the preservation tree. So first up we have Echo, Awesome, and then Dream Breath and Reversion. So you're always getting these talents because there's no way to not get them. Then you get Temporal Compression. I recommend having a weak aura to help track this. Essence Burst, this makes it so Living Flame has a 20% chance to make your next Essence ability free. Rewind is an amazing cooldown that you will always have access to. Time Dilation, amazing ability. Don't underestimate it. You can use it so much to just make your life easier and and help people take less damage. Essence Burst stacks two times. I think there's a typo here, guys, because it says stacks two times there, even when I don't have it selected, so something's weird here. Anyways, you take this. A Spirit Bloom, great ability, great empowered ability. It can be a single target spell at one empowered or a AoE healing spell if you use multiple empowers. Here, Emerald Communion is amazing, amazing defensive. Because it has a lot of utility, you can use it for yourself or you can use it for your allies. Now using it to heal your allies can be tricky. I think it kind of randomly chooses people to heal, but it is a good heal. Next, Spirit Bloom increases Essence Regeneration by 100% or Spiritual Clarity reduces cooldown. Personally, I like Spiritual Clarity better. Having it on a 20 second cooldown instead of 30 second cooldown lets you use it much more often. If you're going for an Emerald Blossom build, you will need Fluttering Seedlings. It makes it so Emerald Blossom, when it explodes, it sends out a seedling which will heal an ally up to 40 yards away. Now the healing it does, as you can see, is not that high. And at tier 2, it sends out two flying seedlings. But what really gives you the value is Field of Dreams, which says those little seedlings have a 30% chance to turn into an Emerald Blossom. So these two talents right here can make it so your Emerald Blossom chains a bunch of times, and you can get a bunch of free blossoms. Now this is probably going to be a lot better in raids, but it can be good in dungeons as well. Life Giver's Flame will be up to you. It is a great talent. It makes it so Fire Breath heals nearby allies for 40% or 80% of the damage done. I really like this talent because it rewards you for DP 
DPSing. But again, if you don't really care about DPSing, then you can opt out of this. Golden Hour, 100%. You need this talent because it makes Reversion so much stronger. Basically, Reversion will instantly heal somebody for 15% of the damage taken in the last 5 seconds. And you can duplicate this. If you echo someone and then use Reversion on them, then they will benefit from two golden hours at the same time. Next, we have a choice node delay harm. Time dilation delays 70% of damage done, or cooldown is reduced by two seconds each time you cast an essence ability. Now, the cooldown is not that long. It's only a minute, and I find most of the time I don't really need it more often than that. So I usually don't take either of these because the 50% is good enough for me. But maybe in high keys, um, we would take the 70% damage reduction. Or if you want to use it more, you know, just in time is good. Temporal Anomaly. This is a great spell, but very mana hungry. You have to be very cautious of your mana. I try to only use Temporal Anomaly, like, right before big damage goes out, because the idea is that you want to shield everyone before the damage goes out so that shield can, you know, take the brunt of some of the damage. Now for this, both of these talents are amazing. The first talent says Temporal Anomaly applies Echo at 30% effectiveness to allies it heals. This is great because you can quickly spread echoes among your party, and it is also great in raids because you can quickly spread echo among the raid group to put reversions on them or whatever you want. And Nose Dormu's teachings is also great because it makes Temporal Anomaly shield one additional target. It pulses three times, I believe, then this would be nine targets getting the shield, and that shield can absorb a good amount of damage. And flow state and power spells cause time to flow 5% faster for you, and then I think it's 10% at the next one. Increases movement speed, cooldown, recharge rate, and cast speed. Now personally, I haven't found this 10% to be that impactful, at least for now, but that could change in the future. Currently, I do not take this talent. Time Lord. Echo replicates 25 or 50% more healing. This will depend on the build that you want to do. If you are doing a build where you are primarily using Echoes to heal your team, then you 100% want this talent. Now, if your main source of healing is through Emerald Blossoms and other sources, and you don't really use Echo, then don't take this talent. Life Force Bender, Living Flame, and Fire Breath deal additional damage, equal to 1% of your maximum health, and then it's 2% with 2. Personally, I don't think you need to put the full 2 points in because there's not really that much of a difference between the 1 or 2%, but having at least one talent point in here does increase the capabilities of Living Flame and Flame Breath. Exhilarating Burst, each time you gain Essence Burst, your crit healing is increased by 15% for 10 seconds. Now this talent is a little missing leading. It is not increasing your crit chance at all. What it is saying is that if your heal crits, then that crit heal is going to be a higher value than it would be normally. And again, it's only a 15% chance for it to be higher. Um, with two talents, it's a 30% chance. And it's only 10 seconds. This might change later when we have better access to stats, like maybe evokers end up liking crit and then you have a high crit chance and then you could get a lot of usage out of this. But if you don't have high crit, then this isn't really going to be doing much. Um, next, Dreamwalker or Rush of Vitality. Both of these are viable options. The increased health can help you survive more damage, and being able to move while using it is very helpful because you can dodge mechanics. Next, Call of Ysera. Verdant Embrace increases the healing of your next Dream Breath by 40% or your next Flipping Flame by 100%. This is an amazing ability because Dream Breath is already such a powerful heal that increasing it by another 40% is huge. So I love to just Verdant Embrace myself or someone else that needs it and then use a one empowered Dream Breath on everyone to get a nice long hot. And remember, you can also use this for Living Flame if you need a strong single target heal. This will definitely buff it enough to give you that. Life Bind, this is a talent that does have huge potential because it makes it so Verdant Embrace temporarily rarely bonds your life with an ally, causing healing either of you guys to receive to also heal the bonded partner for 40% of that amount. It only lasts 5 seconds, so you need to really use this carefully if you want to utilize the full healing amount. 
and this could be really great in raids too. Say that you know one of your fellow healers is about to use a major healing cooldown and you have echoes on a bunch of people. Well then you just Verdant and Brace and then when that person uses their healing cooldown then you will piggyback off of that and also get a bunch of healing through life by uh, Punctuality Reversion has two charges. I think this is a must have talent because Reversion is a great hot and you do want to spread it as much as possible. Time of need, when you are an ally fall below 20% health, a version of yourself enters your timeline and heals them. Your alternate self continues healing for 8 seconds before returning to their timeline. This only occurs every 90 seconds by the way. This can be good in a pinch, say some people took a ton of damage, it will save someone from dying for sure, but I haven't really taken it that much. It's something that could be experimented with more, it's definitely a viable talent. Uh, energy loop, disintegrate deals more damage and generates mana over its duration. If you're having mana troubles, you can take this talent. I heard that the damage increase it does to disintegrate isn't worth it right now, but hopefully Blizzard will buff it a little bit more and make disintegrate worth it for healers to use. Here you have Tempora Artificer, which makes Rewind's cooldown reduced by 60 seconds, or Rewind has two charges, but its healing is reduced by 50%. This is going to be situational. For dungeons, Erasure is amazing because you get two charges of it, and even though it does 50% less healing, it still does a lot of healing, so I personally have been liking it in the mythics I have been doing. As for Tempora Artificer, this is going to be situational, and I think it's more of a raid talent. If a boss fight is 6 minutes long, then you'll want to take this because you can get 2 uses of rewind. But if a boss fight is 5 minutes long, then you would not take this because you only get 1 use of rewind regardless. So you have to know how long the boss fight is to determine if you want that talent. Now for Font of Magic, Empowered Spells, maximum levels increased by 1. I like taking this, some people don't think it's worth it, but I like it. The reason I like it is because it makes Spirit Bloom hit four people instead of three, so it just makes it a better group heal overall. It makes Tip the Scale Spirit Bloom much more powerful. It also gives Dream Breath an extra Empowered level, so you can use Tip the Scale's Dream Breath for an even bigger instant heal if you really need the healing right away and you can't wait for that hot to heal them. Ouroboros, I have not used this talent at all because it seems to me that it would be hard to try and get this talent used up. The reason for that is because Emerald Blossom and Dream Breath can only heal a max of 5 targets. So that means you would have to use them 4 times and each time they would have to hit a total of 5 targets to get the full healing. Another reason I don't take it is because it only affects 1 Echo. So this is just basically making you have a super powerful single target Echo that you can use. But I don't really see where the benefit is to that other than maybe during the fight one person takes a ton of damage. But again, I haven't experimented with this. Power Nexus increases your maximum essence to 6. This is going to be essential in a Emerald Blossom build because it lets you use two Emerald Blossoms instead of one. And it's also essential in Echo builds, I feel like, because with that extra essence, you can Echo three players instead of two. So it's a really nice talent. Spark of Insight, consuming a full temporal compression grants you Essence Burst. I think this will probably be more helpful in raids or if you are finding that you are Essence starved a lot, you would want it. Because if you watch that temporal compression buff and you plan it out correctly, you can get so many Essence Bursts with this talent. So if you really want to use a ton of Essence Bursts, um, go for it. Okay, Renewing Breath. Dream Breath healing is increased by 15 or 30%. Personally, I love Dream Breath. The hot is amazing now that we have it. So I really like this talent because it just makes that Dream Breath hot so powerful and having hots for dungeons is very essential. They're just so nice to have. Uh, Grace Period is amazing because your healing is increased by 5 or 10% on targets with your reversion. So if you plan it out correctly and you keep reversion on players before healing them, you can get a bit of a boost. Now, Timeless Magic says reversion time dilation in Echo lasts 15 or 30% longer. This is essential in an Echo based build for sure, but the main reason you would take this probably is for Stasis. So, Stasis is one of our major cooldowns here. 
Stasis, as I've gone over before, is a powerful ability, but it can be tricky to use at first as you're getting used to how things work. And it is probably one of our better cooldowns. Cycle of Life, I think this is more of a raid talent that you would use. Every three emerald blossoms leaves behind a sprout, which gathers 15% of your healing over 10 seconds, then the sprout heals allies within 30 yards, dividing the healing among the targets. This is definitely better in raids. It can have uses in dungeons, but you kind of have to keep an eye on it. You would definitely want a weak aura to track the cycle of life buff, that way you know when it's triggering, and then when it's active, you would want to use as much healing as possible, potentially, to get the most effect out of it. Dream Flight, so far, feels pretty underwhelming. The amount of healing it does is not that great, and it's kind of clunky to use and dangerous to use because when you use Dream Flight, a mechanic can spawn under you, and if you fly over certain mechanics, they will damage you while you're flying over them. So it can be dangerous to use this if you don't think about where you're using it first. It's also very hard to hit players with it, like it will look like someone's in the area of effect, but you fly over them and they were like right on the edge and it won't hit them. So I do not recommend Dream Flight at all currently. So now what talent build for dungeons and raids, you ask? This first talent build is the Emerald Blossom dungeon build and anything you see in yellow is interchangeable. So if you don't like a specific talent, feel free to switch it out for something else. Now in this build, if you are ever doing a dungeon with enrages, such as no cut offensive, I recommend removing rescue and taking a pressing roar and overall instead so you can get rid of those enrages. This next build is the echo and reversion build for dungeons. And this last build is the raid build. If you have any questions, please comment below and I'll be happy to answer. You can find links to all of these builds in the description below. Now that you know everything, what about the rotation? Well, healers don't follow a strict rotation like DPS, but you do need to know how to prioritize spells. So I'll give you all the tips that I have for Evoker. First off, Essence. At first, you may think you should always be spending Essence. If you get Essence Burst, you should always use something for it. Well, that is not necessarily the case. If there is nothing to heal, there is no point in wasting your essence by throwing out a random ability. With that GCD, you can instead do some damage with Living Flame. I know Disintegrate is an S suspender that also does DPS, however currently spamming Living Flame deals more damage than using Disintegrate, even with Energy Loot. If that ever changes, I will put a comment down below that will update you. Now this is the short version for the rotation. Use Spirit Bloom and Dream Breath for group-wide heavy damage. Try to keep reversion on as many players as possible. Use Averted Embrace as your strong single target heal, and use Echoes to spread your healing to players that need it. Emerald Blossom can be used to AoE heal players that are grouped up. If you're using Emerald Blossom build, then you should be using Emerald Blossom to do medium group healing over Echoes. Only use Living Flame to heal if you have no other options. If you're using Lifegiver's Flame and Life Force Mender, you can use Max Empowered Fire Breath to help heal players during a fight or a pack but don't rely on Fire Breath to heal up big damage. Use Time Dilation on players that are taking lots of damage. For major cooldowns, you will need to plan Stasis around the boss's heavy group-wide damage. As for Rewind, this has to be used after group damage goes out. Just be careful as it heals back damage over 5 seconds. It is not instant. So if group damage is constant or dots are applied, then you have to follow up with more heals after Rewind. That was the quick and dirty version of the summary, now I'll go more in depth because this video is going to be mega long. So DPS tips, first of all, if you're a healer that doesn't want to DPS, then skip this part. But for those of you who want to know, for maximizing DPS, you need these talents. Scarlet Adaptation, Enkindled, Instinctive Arcana, Blast Furnace, Protracted Talons, only for cleave, if there's no cleave you can skip this one, Leaping Flames, and a Life Force Mender. And you only need one point in Life Force Mender. The DPS rotation is simple. On multi-target fights, always use a Max Empowered Fire Breath so your next Living Flame will hit 4-5 to five targets. Then spam Living Flame while Fire Breath is on cooldown, and use Azure Strike if mobs will not live long enough for you to finish casting Living Flame. On single target fights, you can use a 1 Empowered Fire Breath and spam Living Flame. Currently, Living Flame does more damage than Disintegrate, but if this changes, I will pin a comment below. As for Deep Breath, this is the best in AoE scenarios. 
If there's a ton of mobs or a ton of ads during a boss fight, then save deep breath for that point. Otherwise, use deep breath as soon as the boss fight starts. Now into the in-depth healing rotation. I want to start off with Living Flame. This is not your main source of healing. You are not supposed to be spamming this all the time. Think of Living Flame as bottom of the barrel. You only use it if you have no other options. Now there are ways to empower the Living Flame heal, such as if you're using the Life Force Mender talent, Living Flame will do a bit more healing than without it. And another thing that will boost Living Flame is the Evoker 4 set, but it'll probably be a while until you have that. Next, Reversion. This is a hot that becomes super strong with Golden Hour. It allows you to put Reversion on players that just took a chunk of damage to give them a nice instant heal. And you can use Echo to put two applications of Reversion on players. And Echoed Reversions also utilize Golden Hour, so if someone really took a big hit, you could do Echo, Reversion, and give them a nice heal. If you're using punctuality, you should never be sitting on two charges of reversion. You should always make sure reversion is on cooldown because you always want to be sending out reversion hots because it helps passive healing a lot. Plus, if you have grace period, it increases the healing of all your other heals. Emerald Blossom is a good heal for stacked up players, and you can also use it during heavy damage to keep players up in between your big heals such as Spirit Bloom or Dream Breath. If you're using Emerald Blossom build, I recommend using Emerald Blossom very often because you'll take advantage of the Fluttering Seedlings talent in the Field of Dreams talent. And while using Emerald Blossom build, if there's one player standing way out away from everyone, just echo them first and then Emerald Blossom will also heal them. Now what about Echo? Echo is going to be a spell that will take practice to master. It's a super strong ability, allows you to copy any of your heals onto other players. You can use it to make single target heals multi-target heals. For example, you just echo three people and then Verdant Embrace somebody else and then everyone gets healed by Verdant Embrace. So Echo is going to take a lot of practice and with Echoes you need to know what damage is going out because it does take time to apply Echoes throughout the group. Even though it is an instant cast, you still have to wait on that GCD. Think of Echoes as you see incoming damage coming, so you Echo everyone in preparation of that damage and then once the damage hits, you use your healing spell and then everyone gets a big heal. Verdant Embrace is your strong single target heal and can be used for movement. Just be super careful not to use it on anyone where you don't know where they are because you can kill yourself very easily by using Vernon Embrace on somebody and they are standing in bed or they're standing in a frontal and then the frontal hits you right when you get there. And if you're using the life bind talent this does make Vernon Embrace pretty strong especially if you echo the group and then spread life bind through. In that five second life bind window just throw out as much healing as possible to give the maximum effect. And in raids you can use life bind when other healers are using a major cooldown to piggyback off their healing. Next, Spear Bloom is a great group heal, especially if you have Phantom Magic, which allows Spear Bloom to hit four players. And just remember, Spear Bloom is not just for group healing, because each empowerment level adds one target. So if you really need to heal one person, you just use an empowered one Spear Bloom to get them up. Dream Breath is another powerful group heal, but it can be tricky to apply it to ranged players that don't stand near anyone else. Dream Breath's hot is incredibly strong because no matter what empower level you use, it does the same amount of healing. 90% of the time, I use empowered one Dream Breath just before or after damage goes out. Then I let the hot do the rest of the healing. If the group damage is really heavy, then I will try to echo as many players as possible and then do the Dream Breath to try and get two Dream Breath hots on everyone. The only time you ever want to use a max empowered Dream Breath is if Spear Bloom is on cooldown and a ton of damage just went out and you just have to get everyone up right away. Temporal Anomaly is a strong ability that costs a lot of mana so you can quickly drain yourself if you overuse it. Only use Temporal Anomaly when big group damage is about to go out. That way it can shield those people from the group damage. If you're using Resonating Spear, make sure to aim your Temporal Anomaly carefully because if you aim it right, you can easily get echoes on the entire party. And if you're using Nors Dormu's teachings, just make sure that that Temporal Anomaly gets out a few seconds before the damage comes out so everyone can get shielded. So that covers the majority of the spells, but now on to the cooldowns. Time dilation, I recommend using every chance you get because it is a strong ability. If you see someone has a dangerous dot on them, then time dilation can help mitigate that damage. It is a great ability with a relatively short cooldown. Your biggest healer cooldown is Rewind, and as I said earlier, it does have limitations. It only heals people over 5 seconds, so if the boss is doing a pulsating damage mechanic or it's doing a mechanic where it puts a dot on everyone, then make sure you have other heals to follow up on Rewind. 
And now for Stasis, the most complicated spell we have because there are so many ways you can use the ability. In order to use Stasis properly, you will need to know what the boss abilities are like so that way you can time it to trigger at a time where it's helpful. Stasis only has a 30 second window to be used after all, and you want to use it when big damage is going out. What I do is use Stasis when the first big group damage hits so I can store my initial spells, and this will allow me to release Stasis for the next time the boss does group wide damage. This does not work for every fight though because some bosses do not do their group wide damage that often. So so that's why you need to know the fights. My preferred stasis combo is a Max Spirit Bloom, a Verdant Embrace, so I can trigger Call of Ysera, and either an Empowered 1 Dream Breath or a Max Empowered Dream Breath. It depends on how much damage there is. Another option is to use Spirit Bloom, Dream Breath, and Temporal Anomaly. If you are using Resonating Sphere, never use Temporal Anomaly first for stasis. This is because as soon as that orb puts echoes on some players, Stasis will record it, which is very bad. You don't want that. If you are using those Dormus teachings though, I recommend using Temporal Anomaly first in your Stasis cooldown. Another Stasis combo can be to echo two players and then use Verdant Embrace to get Life Bind on them, or you can just use three echoes and then plan to use your Verdant Embrace when the Stasis goes off, so you can get Life Bind on everyone and then maybe do a big Spirit Bloom or something. However, I still think those spells are kinda weak for Stasis. One last combo I want to mention is storing three Temporal Anomalies. This does take more setup because you need to wait for the Temporal Anomaly cooldown, and I think this combination would work the best in raids where you could spread those orbs around multiple groups of people and get so many Absorb Shields out. Just be aware that it will eat up a lot of mana doing this, so I recommend having Energy Loop so you can try and restore some mana or maybe have a Mana Pot of some sort. Before wrapping up in stasis, I just want to mention another thing. It is easy for stasis to record spells that you do not want it to record. For example, say you used Emerald Blossom and then you triggered stasis, but you're running the Emerald Blossom build, and one of your fluttering seedlings turns into a new Emerald Blossom. Well, that new Emerald Blossom will get stored in stasis. So if you're using Emerald Blossom build, make sure no blossoms are out when you trigger it. Now, no one knows what the stat priority is going to be yet, but I am guessing that our number one stat is going to be Mastery, and then after that, it's between Crit and Haste. And then last, I think, is going to be Versatility. But keep an eye on the comment section below. I will post the stat weights when we have them. Now for add-ons and UI, I will put a link in the description below for the UI I'm using so you can copy it if you want to, and also put links in the description for all the add-ons and weak auras that I'm about to go over. So the preservation weak auras I made for myself for this is a Blessing of the Bronze one to tell me when it's not on me. I have a weak ore to show me when Hover is active, and it shows me the countdown for the remaining time. Then I also track Temporal Compression, and it glows at 4 stacks. I have a weak ore for Call of Ysera, so I know how long my Dream Breath or Living Flame will be empowered for. And I have one for Cycle of Life if I ever use the Emerald Blossom build. And I also have a tracker for Timebender, which is the Evoker 2 set. I have a Reversion tracker that tells me how many charges I have, and it also shows the cooldown for them. Now I still need a weak ore for Scarlet Adaptation, and once I find one, I will put that in the description as well. I also have a Thundering weak ore a pack I made, and what it does is it shows if you have Mark of Lightning or Mark of Wind on you, and then at 5 seconds remaining, the icon glows and it plays a loud air horn sound. As I get more weak ores into Dragonflight, I'll make sure to update the description. And then for nameplates, I am using Plater at the moment, and for boss mods, I am using Big Wigs. Now if you're looking for a healer UI add-on, I've heard a lot of great things about a Voodoo and Healbot, but currently I don't have either of those. And there's everything about Preservation of Ogre that I can fit into this video. Now I do have a brand new website where I have posted a full, thorough guide for Preservation of Ogre, so I'll also link that in the description below so you can check it out and review at your own pace all the information I have just shared with you. If you have any questions, please comment below and I will answer. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more Preservation of Ogre content.